This video will introduce you to the basics of working with Moat Frontier. Physical problem will be used uh, for this as an example from Astrophysics and Microsoft Excel will be used as a solver of this problem. So you should be able to know the basics of working with Moat Frontier after this video lecture. You will know how to use Microsoft Excel as a solver in Moat Frontier you will uh, explore a physical problem with a mode frontier you should be able to build and run a mode frontier project and analyze different tables and other tools that mode frontier has such as different charts history scatter and 3d scatter charts are some examples of plots that we are going to use in this video so the problem, as, as I said, is a physical problem from astrophysics. Here we see and the orbital average speed V0 of an object in elliptical orbit is given by the formula shown here. So the main aim in this exercise is that we have two parameters, two input parameters. DA is the same major axis of elliptical orbit and ECC is orbital eccentricity. These are our two input parameters and we want to vary these parameters and see the effect on the output parameters. We have three output parameters. V0 is a mean orbital speed and two orbital times, one in seconds and the other in years, which are denoted by T sec and T year. So as I mentioned, our solver here will be an Excel file here I have the Excel file, you will, uh, you will see the two, two inputs, which are the ECC and A, and we have our three outputs, TSEC, TIER, and V0. So for example, if I change the value for ECC here in the Excel file, let's put it to 0 0.018, and if you look at the outputs here, you see that they change, and you see that V0 is uh, dependent on ECC. Now let's try to change A. Let's reduce one zero from it and you see that all the output variables has changed. So this means that these uh, are affected by uh, the input variables. Now we want to try to see the effects of the uh, input variable on the output variable by varying these input variables in mode frontier. So we don't save. So here you will see how different templates that make your work easier. If you know what you want to do, you can use the templates. But here we're going to do a project from scratch. So blank, we open a new blank project file. As we said, we have two input variables and three output variables. So we can search through search bar for the input variable or we can simply browse here and find it. So I use the search bar, I write input, and we have the input. So we can just drag the input uh, variable to our uh, canvas. And our first variable was A. I name it A. I will put a description for A. The format, how do we want Emote Frontier to show the values of different A's? So let's put it like this e to the power of zero. We need a lower bound and upper bound for this variable. For A, the lower bound will be 1 multiplied by e to power of 8. And the upper bound is 1 multiplied by e to power of 9. So we keep the others the same and we confirm it by the new thing. So we now see that we have our A created. but now, there is a cross red cross sign on top of the node. That means that there is an error with that a node. And you can check the error here at the bottom left corner of your canvas. You see that what's the error? Once you solve this error, resolve this error, then the cross sign will be removed. So we have one more input variable. So we drag another input node, double click it to see the properties. That is the name is ECC. And let's put the description. So how do we want to format it? Let's put it like this. And we need a lower bound and upper bound. So the lower bound is zero and the upper bound is 
0.999 you keep the other variables the same and click OK to confirm it so we have our two input variables we had three output variable for the problem we can search for the output nodes and we can see here the output variable so we just simply drag it in and first let's put our orbital time in seconds we just keep the format we don't change the format we have two other variables which is orbital time in year and the format let's put it like 0 0.00 we have another variable which is v0 we want to uh, since we want the format to be see, same as a t year we can just simply copy and paste t year so if i copy ctrl c and paste we i have another t year which is named t1 we i have to change the name put it to v0 and the format is the same as you can see you just can drag and change the position of the inputs and output variables in the canvas to make it more visible and not cluttered together so here we need a since our solver is in excel we need to search for an excel node if i search here in search bar i have excel node i just drag it here in the middle so our input nodes will be giving input to our excel solver so by just uh, clicking on the inputs and connecting that to the input of the excel file for both of these input variables so when we do that we see that the cross uh, red cross sign on the input variables is removed that means that they are okay now so now we need to connect the output of excel file to the to the output variables we can do that same same thing by clicking on the excel and connecting it to the output or just simply right clicking edit node configuration and here by using uh, the connectors and selecting different output variables t sec is one of them t year is the second one and v0 is the third one so if we do this we see that the red cross on the output variables is also removed so here on the panel you can see the different properties or different values for each input variable output variable if you have design objective or constraints so let's save our uh, project file before continuing further on so we go here save as and save it as an orbital prg and you see the format is prj for a mode frontier project so now our excel file is connected to both input variables and output variables now we need to connect our excel file to the excel node so let's double click it and here you can find the workbook in the workbook area you have to find your excel file and just select the excel file and open so now we have to test uh, the configuration to see if it is uh, connected or not do the test and here you see we have an error so the error here tells us that uh, Microsoft Excel uh, does not allow, uh, for security reason, does not allow an external program to access. So we have to do some changes in the setting. So we go to uh, our Excel file, open our Excel file. We go to options, trust centers, then uh, trust center setting, micro setting, and we click on trust access to visual basic project object mode click confirm and close the excel file so now if we go back to mode frontier and do another test we see that it is corrected and we don't have the error anymore now we have to uh, connect the inputs and outputs to uh, the appropriate cells in the excel workbook so we can do that by uh, interactive selection we connect that so it opens our excel file 
So for A, for example, we click on A, and we know A is uh, selected from cell 1B. So we click on 1B, and you see that this is selected here. And we do the same for the other variable, ECC, and the same for the outputs, TSEC, tier, and V0. So here you see that the input connectors are uh, successfully connected and the same with the output connectors. So we're done here. So now that the Excel uh, file is connected to the ac actual Excel workbook and the input and outputs are connected to Excel, we need to insert a scheduling start node. This is where the design values are chosen and executed. So if you search through the nodes and search for a schedule, here we have a scheduling start. We can connect the scheduling start to the input of the Excel. And if you double click it, we can configure the properties of the scheduling start. We will select a DOE sequence since we don't need any optimization. And uh, we go to the DOE configuration. We need to create a table, DOE table, design of experiment table. We create a table. Let's name it DOE1. And we can use different DOE methods uh, to create our table. Here, we use the full factorial design of experiment. If you search through it, it's full factorial. And oh, we change uh, the levels for the input variable. For the first variable, for A, we need 10 levels. And uh, for the second variable, we're going to go with eight levels. So uh, total, we're going to have 80 different design points. Create our DOE table. So now we have our uh, input. The last thing we need here is a logic end. Let's search for logic end. I've put it here, connect the Excel to logic end. And now all the red cross signs are removed. And we know that our uh, project is correct so we save it again and now we can run our project so here on the top right corner we have the button for run run it needs uh, to save it again we will save it as a little prj here on the bottom right corner of your interface you will see the different design points and here 79 so since we started from zero so we have 80 design points and all of them are green it means they're all feasible so it basically tells us that the run is finished and we can go to the design space to uh, analyze the results so here on the right uh, on, on the left side of our interface we have the tables charts and functions so if you look at the tables we see our doe table which was the table we created at the beginning then we have our design table so that's the results we get from mode frontier run you see you can see the all the id of the runs you see the algorithm we use the inputs and the outputs but these numbers are um, will not give us a good sense of the results so we can uh, illustrate the table with different charts so let's um, select this design table or let's begin by um, selecting the doe table so our design of experiment table and go to charts and use a history chart add a history chart here we're going to see how the input variables varied with the design id So here you see that's the design full factor design of experiment and you see the changes in A based on the design ID. You can create the same thing for the other variable and it, it will give you the same information. So now let's select the other table, our result table or our design table and uh, create a history chart for our objective one are our objectives output variables v0 
So here you see that how the value of V0 changed over time with different design IDs from design ID 0 to design ID 80. So let's select one of these uh, designs. So that's design uh, number 33. And you will have the input, the X value, which is uh, 33 design ID and the Y value which is the value of V0 which is 16.21 so if you right click on that you will get more information on our uh, on that specific design point you will get the input variable the output variable for that the type of design the category of our design and the design ID and you will also get a plot here summarize all the information above in this simple chart here below so we know that v0 is dependent on both input variables a and ecc so let us create a diagram where we can see the relationship between all three variables so that diagram will be a 3d scatter chart so we go on this charts we search for scatter 3d add and we select our inputs and the output variable so first we select a as our x-axis we hold the shift we select ecc as our y-axis and v0 the third one which is our z-axis the order in which we select these input and output variables are important since the order will tell us which variable will be on which axis so if we close it maximize it and you can see the chart the 3d scatter chart but here in this view that's not uh, very visible the design points so we can rotate that by holding the control button and just dragging the mouse we can zoom in zoom out by scrolling the mouse we can control use the control shift button to pan it and the same edit options that we have for the uh, other charts we have here in the 3d scatter charts also you can uh, change or modify different properties of the charts here on the property section on the top right corner of our interface so now let's press r and go back to original view for instance you want to use this chart in your report or in your presentation so how do we export that so one way of exporting is just clicking right clicking on it and copy chart and just pasting it in a word file another one will be using the print option so if you print to file and select the file select the place do you want to print then you will have it at different you can save it in different format for example like a gif format or word document or powerpoint presentation format this is useful when you want to use your charts in your reports let's create another 3d scatter chart and this time let's have a ecc and tsec as our uh, z axis create the chart close and let's make it full screen and let's explore it a bit and see the relations between the inputs and the output variables so now try to study the diagram what can you tell about the relationship between the three variables specifically what is the relationship between ecc and tsec you could get very useful information and you can discover knowledge from these charts tables of mode frontier and use it in your report so in this video you have learned to create a workflow and configure the mode frontier user interface use excel as a solver run a project and monitor its progress perform post-processing of data including a number of charts for visual representation of results and finally use mode frontier to explore a physical problem